Welcome into today's edition of Just the Truth. Glad to have you join me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio. To lose weight for the last time, visit myphdweightloss.com. The U.S. Senate passed the $95 billion aid package for Ukraine and Israel in a measure that calls for TikTok to divest from the Chinese-owned ByteDance. The bill now goes to Joe Biden's desk where the president is expected to sign it. Are things getting a little too close to home? Anti-Israel protesters gathered near the Brooklyn home of Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and were arrested last night. FBI Director Christopher Wray is warning of a heightened threat environment and is pleading with lawmakers to take each one seriously and give them the resources to protect our interests. And climate activists have a new target in mind for a major summer project in which they want to make our lives miserable. I told you we'd be back. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's Joey Hudson. On our guest line this morning, Senator Tim Scott. Thank you for listening to one of the best radio shows. Joey, God bless your leadership. Joey, congratulations on your new show. I just wanted to let you know that I always appreciate your perspective and your common sense approach to the issues. You know what? If people like you keep telling us the truth, believe me, we're paying close attention. Let your voice be heard. And the truth shall set you free. Here's Joey Hudson. We're feeling really good. You know, it's not every day you can say you made the world truly a better place. But I think the Senate can say that tonight. And I'm very proud of what has happened. So let me just say a few things. Tonight, after more than six months of hard work, many twists and turns in the road, America sends a message to the entire world. We will not turn our back on you. We tell our allies, we stand with you. We tell our adversaries, don't mess with us. We tell the world we will do everything to defend democracy and our, way or, and our way of life. This national security bill is one of the most important measures Congress has passed in a very long time to protect America's security and the security of Western democracy. To our friends in Ukraine, America will soon deliver more ammunition and air defenses and basic supplies you need to resist Putin on the battlefield. To our friends in Israel, America will soon deliver aid to help you fight the scourge of Hamas and stand up to Iran. To innocent civilians in Gaza in the midst of a war and to those around the world who face hunger, America will deliver food and medicine and clothing. And to our friends in the Indo-Pacific, we will stand with you to resist the Chinese Communist Party. And to the whole world, rest assured, America will never shrink from its responsibilities as a leader on the world stage. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer announcing the passage of a $95 billion package that will include aid to Ukraine and Israel. Passed the Senate last night after the House's various adjustments were approved in the lower chamber this past weekend. The vote was 79 to 18. The Senate sent the package to President Joe Biden's desk, and he's expected to sign off on the additional foreign aid. It's notably passed with more votes than the previous Senate passed version had garnered back in February. The package ultimately included aid to Ukraine, to Israel, and Taiwan, alongside measures that would require TikTok to divest from the Chinese-owned bike dance and to allow $5 billion in Russian assets held in U.S. banks to be transferred to Ukraine. Biden had initially requested the supplemental foreign aid in October, a different version of the package with funds for Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan passed the Senate in February but was never voted on in the House. Under the measures, roughly $61 billion is set aside for supporting Ukraine in the war against Russia. About $26 billion is allotted for Israel and humanitarian aid there. And nearly $8 billion is provided for the Indo-Pacific and Taiwan area. The Senate cleared the way for quick passage of the bill earlier on Tuesday when it voted in favor of invoking cloture 81-19. to They knew they had the votes then. After the cloture motion passed, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer celebrated telling senators in in his floor remarks in a resounding bipartisan vote, the relentless work of six long months has paid off. He said this is an important day for America. Um, Prior to the cloture vote, a significant number of senators had sought a motion to table an amendment tree which blocks other amendments from being considered in regular order. The motion to the table was a close vote with 48 supporting it and 50 voting against it, allowing the amendment tree to stand. 
Senator Bernie Sanders from Vermont released a statement following the motion's failure, noting that it meant his amendment wouldn't be considered. He wanted to see votes on his two amendments to the package, which would have ended unconditional aid to Israel and restored funding to the United Nations Relief and Work Agency. Polls show that a majority of Americans and very strong majority of Democrats want to end U.S. taxpayer support for Netanyahu's war against the Palestinian people, Sanders said in a statement. He said it's a dark day for democracy when the Senate will not even allow a vote on that issue. Senator, I believe you're a little out of, uh, out of touch with the American people. A number of Republican lawmakers who wanted votes on their respective amendments, including Senator Mike Lee of Utah, who proposed an amendment to require repayment of the foreign aid loan to Ukraine in order to make it real. If any amendments were passed in the Senate, the bill would have been sent back to the House for its consideration once again. Are things getting a little too close to home? Anti-Israel protesters gathered near the Brooklyn home of Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer yesterday. They were quickly arrested and seen being escorted out with their hands tied with zip ties. More details on that in just a moment. Portions of today's show made possible by PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition. I've been sharing with you my journey, my success with the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition program for almost four years now. All of you listening know that I lost 30 pounds relatively quickly, and I've been able to keep it off for three years. If you're listening today and you're considering this, let me ask you to just go ahead and make the phone call, 864-252-4925. Set up your appointment to sit down with one of Dr. Ashley Lucas, a Ph.D. weight loss and nutrition's uh, health coach. They'll get you back on track. They'll give you the tools to lose the weight, and again, Uh, Depending on how much you need to lose, I lost my 30 pounds in just a matter of a few months. I've had listeners who have lost up to 135 pounds. And the good good news is, again, you're going to lose weight for the last time because they give you the skills in order to keep the weight off. You're going to feel better. You're going to have more energy. You're going to be able to focus on things better. You'll be able to do things that you haven't been able to do in a long, long time with your children, your grandchildren, you're just going to feel so much better. You're going to sleep better too. Call today, 864-252-4925. Find them online at myphdweightloss.com. PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition, the official partner of the Clemson Tigers and their fans. Anti-Israel protesters gathered near the Brooklyn home of Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. Police officers were seen placing zip ties on demonstrators at the scene the New York Police Department did not immediately have a number uh, as far as the, the, the number of, of these uh, demonstrators who were arrested. The protest came a day after more than 100 people were arrested at an NYU Gaza Solidarity encampment on the college campus in New York. New York has just gone crazy when it comes to this. I mean, you had Columbia University uh, this week. You also had uh, NYU University. And... These university officials just seem to be sitting back and letting them do it. Uh, It it was announced that uh, as far as Columbia University goes, their classes have been suspended on campus, and they'll be doing virtual learning for the rest of the semester. A founder of a pro-Israel international campus movement is warning against history repeating itself as anti-Semitism continues to rage not only in the New York area, but other college campuses around the country. Elon Sinelnikov, the president and founder of Student Supporting Israel, SSI, a pro-Israel student movement, says the history is repeating itself, pointing to the recent anti-Israel protest on Columbia University's campus in New York City. History at the end of the day repeats itself. You know, what we have seen back in the 30s with uh, harassment and intimidation of Jewish people across Europe, you know, when Jewish students were not allowed to universities, people were creating human chains in order to block Jewish students from entering. We've seen the same pictures from Yale University. We've seen the same pictures from Columbia University. You see Jewish students are being intimidated and harassed on college campuses, you know, and I I was on the call with a Jewish student and that goes to Columbia University. And she, one out of many, and she said that I can't wait to pack my bags and get on the first flight home. I don't want to be on this campus anymore. You know, so when you get to the point when in our most prestigious universities, Jewish students don't feel safe. 
to walk on those campuses because they're afraid of being harassed, they're afraid of being uh, physically assaulted. You know, at Tulane University, a student was physically assaulted and had his broken, uh, had his nose broken because he grabbed a flag that was an Israeli flag that people attempted to set on fire. Our speaker at Columbia University last week was assaulted outside of the university. So when you see all of that, the similarities are frightening, you know, and um, people need to be aware that this is what's happening in the highest education institutions. And we also know that, you know, what happened in the Holocaust, I lost many family members in the Holocaust. What happened in the Holocaust, you know, it didn't happen overnight. You know, there were years and years of indoctrination and a hatred that was spread, especially towards youth, especially in the educational systems against the Jewish people. And this is what you see today on our campuses, you know, so they try to portrait Jewish people as subhuman. You know, you see today messages on uh, campuses and people chant, kick out all the Zionists, kick out, uh, or, uh, you know, they uh, swear at Jewish students, you know, without having any shame in doing so. You know, so you see all of those footages and you cannot just ignore the similarities. House GOP Conference Chair Elise Stefanik from New York sent a scathing letter to top Biden officials about the ongoing anti-Israel protest at Columbia University, demanding federal intervention to protect Jewish students. Representative Stefanik appeared on the Sean Hannity show recently to talk about how what she called the rot we are seeing at these schools starts at the top, she said, with the presidents who allow this type of action to take place on their campuses. My take, Sean, is there is a reason that the testimony of the presidents of Harvard, Penn, and MIT made history as the most viewed testimony ever with over one billion views. And that's because their testimony was morally bankrupt and pathetic. My question was very simple. It was a moral question. Does calling for the genocide of Jews con- ruin your school's code of conduct? Does go against your school's code of conduct? And every single one said it depended upon the context. We know it does not depend on the context. It should be condemned. It is not that difficult to say that, yet all three failed abysmally, and the world saw it. It is unacceptable that it took Harvard a month to demand the resignation of Claudine Gay. Penn made the right decision immediately, but this is after it was forced in front of the world to see. And I believe these university presidents sit atop these institutions that have rotted out and have institutionalized anti-Semitism, particularly after Hamas's terrorist attack against Israel in early October. We've seen Jewish students assaulted, physically harassed, and facing just vile, vile attacks every single day. In a letter yesterday, Stefanik wrote to Education Secretary Miguel Cardona, Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, and Attorney General Merrick Garland, the New York Congresswoman did not mince words when describing the disarray caused by the anti-Israel protests at the New York City Ivy League institution threatening Jewish students and faculty. She said over the past few days, anarchy has engulfed the campus of Columbia University and created an environment that is unsafe for Jewish students and faculty. She continued, you have the ability and authority to put a stop to this and take concrete steps to hold accountable those responsible. She said consequences are needed for those who are calling for terrorism and violent attacks. Stefanik cited the Immigration and Nationality Act, which states that anyone who endorses terrorism can become ineligible for American residency, and noted that protesters are brazenly endorsing Hamas and other terrorist organizations. As I mentioned earlier, classes at Columbia will be entirely virtual, for the rest of the semester due to the protest. New York Mayor Eric Adams blamed outside agitators for fanning the flames during a press conference he held yesterday as well. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Your comments are welcome on the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a voice message. You can send an email directly, joey at joeyhudson.com. Whether it's terrorism, China, or an insecure border, the U.S. faces a litany of threats both internally and internationally, according to FBI Director Christopher Wray. That in just a moment. First, let me talk with you about Furman Ford. If you're looking for a new vehicle, uh, maybe a a good used vehicle, pre-owned vehicle that you know you can trust, or maybe you need service on your existing vehicle, you can get all of this at Furman Ford in Lawrence. It's, It's very important, I think, to support locally run businesses 
businesses run by people who live right here in the upstate, and that's what you're going to get when you do business with Furman Ford. Their name is on the sign because their name is on the line. Jim Furman, Matthew Furman, they take that very seriously. They do business the right way, and that means when you stop in, when you give them a call, or when you send them an email, you always have access to a member of the Furman Ford family. They'll help you navigate the, some of the great deals they have on uh, their selection of pre-owned vehicles. They have a great inventory of new vehicles. And as I mentioned, if you just need service on your existing vehicle, you're not going to have to wait weeks or months to get in to get that ser- uh, that vehicle service. Uh, just give Furman Ford a call and get that scheduled today. You're going to love doing business with them because Furman Ford just provides an all-around better buying experience visit my friends at Furman ford and lawrence find them online at FurmanFord.com. again that's FurmanFord.com. fbi director christopher ray claims that he has repeatedly warned of a heightened threat environment and is pleading with lawmakers to take each one seriously connecting all these separate threats is the fbi's ability to adequately address them he said At a House Appropriations Subcommittee earlier this month, Ray said that the FBI's fiscal year 2024 budget was around $500 million below what the Bureau needed to sustain its 2023 efforts. Ray said the budget shortfall could not have come at a worse time, given that the U.S., according to the Bureau, is in a heightened threat environment. Ray told House lawmakers, As I look back over my career in law enforcement, I'd be hard-pressed to think of a time where so many threats to public safety and national security were so elevated all at once. But this is the case as I sit here today. He talked about China. said of all the threats that the U.S. faces, the FBI has signaled that China far outweighs them all. According to Ray, the People's Republic of China has built up a vast cybersecurity and counterintelligence apparatus devoted to theft of intellectual property and criminality. Ray spoke about the threat posed by China during a summit on modern conflict and emerging threats at Vanderbilt University. China's hacking program, he said, was larger than that of any other major nation combined, and that's only magnified by the PRC's military and growing use of artificial intelligence. To give a sense of the scope of the PRC's operations, Ray said that even the Bureau's top cyber agents and cyber intelligence analysts were focused solely on China and not on ransomware, Iran or Russia, Chinese hackers would still, conservatively, he said, outnumber FBI cyber personnel by at least 50 to 1. He said Beijing has hit just about every American industry, whether it's biotech, aviation, AI, health, or agriculture, to to steal U.S. intellectual property. He said you could close your eyes and pull an industry or sector out of the hat, and chances are Beijing has targeted it. PRC is engaged in the largest and most sophisticated theft of intellectual property and expertise in the history of the world, leveraging its most powerful weapons, starting with cyber, he said. Uh, Ray had previously told lawmakers that there had been uh, far too little public focus on the fact that PRC hackers are targeting the U.S.'s uh, critical infrastructure. He said in preparation to wreak havoc and cause real-world harm to American citizens and communities, That's what China is setting things up to do. China maligns efforts, he said, are driven largely by the Chinese Communist Party's aspirations to wealth and power as it seeks to seize economic development in the areas most critical to our economy. Compounding these threats is China's long-term goal to retake Taiwan. Per Christopher Wray, the office of the Director of National Intelligence last year, assessed that Beijing was building out its capability to deter U.S. intervention in a potential crisis between China and Taiwan, possibly sometime between now and 2027. Ray warned in January that the PRC had circled the year 2027 on its calendar and will be on us before you know it. He spoke of the border. Securing the border remains a top issue for American voters, as we all know, particularly amid the rise of suspects on terrorist watch lists, as well as the proliferation of deadly fentanyl into communities throughout the the nation. Ray told lawmakers of the House Appropriations Subcommittee on April the 11th that the Bureau continues to see drug cartels pushing fentanyl and other dangerous drugs into every corner of the country. He noted at Vanderbilt University last week that many of fentanyl's uh, precursor chemicals that end up in our communities are coming out of China via 
Mexico. At a Senate Judiciary Committee hearing in December, Ray said the Bureau had seized enough fentanyl to kill 270 million people. He said that's about 80% of all Americans. He said we're also focused on other threats that emanate from the border and impact communities all over the country, things like violent gangs and human traffickers. So if, if, the, if Joe Biden's FBI director is so concerned about these threats and particularly concerned about the threats coming across the southern border, why can't he influence his boss to close down the border? Asked by Senator Lindsey Graham in December whether the U.S. was seeing the largest terrorist threat since 9-11, Ray said that the threat was higher than it's been in a long, long time. Ray told Graham, I see blinking lights everywhere I turn. Ray said earlier this month that the U.S. was at a heightened threat level of terrorism even before October 7th when Hamas militants stormed into Israel, killing 1,200 people and taking around 250 hostages. He said after October 7th is when we went to a whole other level. Ray said the FBI has seen a rogue gallery of foreign terrorist organizations calling for attacks on the U.S. This includes Hezbollah and Lebanon praising Hamas and threatening to attack U.S. interests in the region. It includes al-Qaeda issuing its most specific call for an attack on the U.S. in the past half decade. AQAP, which is uh, an al-Qaeda Uh, in the Arabian Peninsula, as well as ISIS, have called for jihadists to attack Americans and Jewish communities in the U.S. In Afghanistan, he said, home to al-Qaeda and the ISIS-K, the U.S. has lost some of of its intelligence-gathering capabilities following the chaotic withdrawal of U.S. Well, whose fault is that? And, And I get that the director is concerned about our safety. He should be. That's his job. But talk to your boss. Talk to Joe Biden. Talk to the guy who's sitting in the Oval Office. Ray uh, also pointed to the growth of other terrorist groups in Africa, like Al-Shahabab. They're funded by a branch of Al-Qaeda, as well as ISIS's attempt to free some very dangerous fighters in Syria. Ray said that these terrorist groups typically don't see eye to eye, but are united in one thing, calling for attacks on the U.S., He said, when organizations like Al-Qaeda, like ISIS, express an intent to conduct attacks against us, it is something we need to take very seriously. And so that's part of why I've highlighted this as a heightened threat. Again, go to your boss. Let your boss know this, particularly the the part about the fentanyl and and the threats that are coming across the southern border because uh, Mr. Director, he can stop that and you know it. On the Furman Ford text line, your comments are welcome. 864-477-5639. Texter writes, Joey, did you hear that Carol Wins installed a parking lot full of car chargers? Is everything liberal? Can you imagine the drain on Charlotte's power grid? Look, we're, we're going to see that about every parking area you come upon now. You see these chargers everywhere. Ace writes on the Furman Ford text line, Joey, As far as God allowing children to suffer and murdered, it's because man sees death as the end. God doesn't. Also, God gave man free will. He has swooped in and stopped horrible things to happen. Then at that point, man could expect God to do everything for them. Nature wouldn't be natural anymore. It would be controlled. We're not slaves. Slaves aren't slaves. We all have the choice of accepting Christ as our Savior, he says. Children are innocent and will be delivered to God if they die before they're old enough to know right from wrong. This is in response to uh, a question that we got earlier this week on the Furman Ford text line from my, my buddy Dom in Illinois, just asking the question of why do we have so much evil in the world? And why does God allow some of the things that we're seeing uh, young children be exposed to? And in some, in some cases, babies being murdered. Susan writes, smirking Columbia University President Namat Shafiq, an obvious DEI hire, is an imbecile falsely claiming that poverty motivated the 9-11 attack. Neither bin Laden nor the 19 hijackers were poor. They all came from wealthy families and were radicalized, much like the pro-Hamas rabble at the Poison Ivy League institutions. Thank you, Susan. 
Ray writes on the firm of Ford text line. Hello, Joey. I hear you talking about sending the podcast to people on our contact list. I do, Ray. Thank you. I, um, I encourage you every day to quickly share just a truth to someone uh, on your contact list. So they'll join our community here. Uh, Ray says the problem I have is that I have a very small list. However, I did ask my sisters to listen. Just wanted to send a shout out to them. Lynn Riggins in Cummings, Georgia, and Karen Lawhorn in Blacksburg, Virginia. I know after listening, they'll be addicted as I am. Have a great day. Thank you, Ray. And thank you, sisters. Thank you, Sister Lynn and Sister Karen. Hope you're uh, listening. And uh, hey, sisters, let me ask you. Why don't you also share just the truth with someone on your contact list, and we'll continue to grow our our community here. Bay writes on the Furman Ford text line, the pro-Palestine protesters need to be locked in a building and forced to watch Ralph Sexton's documentary on October the 7th. It was very horrible to see how God's favorite people were treated. The acts that were committed were, uh, were heinous. Don't think it can't happen here if we stay on the same train. Our text of encouragement today from Dolly Parton. If you don't like the road you're walking, start paving another one. Now, Dolly didn't send that to me. I just happened to see that she had written it. Uh, but who knows? Maybe Dolly Parton does listen to Just the Truth. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Your text or welcome on the Fervent Ford text line. You can also leave a voice message. Emails are welcome, joey at joeyhudson.com. From our, our email inbox, Jennifer writes, um, Hey, Joey, it's Jennifer. Regarding these anti-Jew, pro-Palestinian, pro-Hamas protests on university campuses, how many of these vile haters are hired guns? Are they paid by George Soros, for, for instance, to come in and rile up the students into a hateful frenzy that causes them to participate in something that they can't even define? I think that's true for many of the students. Listening to these nitwit academics speak about this mess, you don't have to wonder why the youth of this country are so misguided. Adults did it to them. They indoctrinated them. Why do we let people like this run education in America? Jennifer goes on and says, and regarding the wonderful Chicago red hat MAGA woman, P. Ray Easley, hope that's correct. Yep, that's who it was, Ray, uh, P. Ray Easley. Somebody give that woman a permanent microphone. She and others speaking at that recent city council meeting in Chicago gave eloquent pleas as the longstanding taxpayers and citizens of Chicago that they be respected and held in higher regard than the increasingly belligerent illegals taking over their city. Now, Jennifer is referencing a story from uh, yesterday's uh, episode of Just the Truth in which we talked about the, a group protesting to the Chicago City Council because they've added another $70 million in their budget to give to illegals. And this lady, P. Ray Easley, was one of the ones speaking to the council objecting to this and very eloquently let them know that the people of Chicago are not going to stand by and let them give away their hard-earned tax dollars. Uh, Jennifer wraps things up, says America is on fire while the man who is able to lead and wants to lead us out of this sits day after day in a bogus courtroom, the most visual example of election interference that we have ever witnessed in our lifetimes. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, uh, your emails are welcome, joey at joeyhudson.com. A group of climate activists are eyeing their next big protest over the summer. I have the details here in just a moment. First, let me talk with you about your refrigerator. You got up this morning, you went into the kitchen to get the cream out for your coffee, and oops, the refrigerator light did not come on. That's always a bad sign. If you're tired of buying appliances from inexperienced sales staff who have no appliance knowledge whatsoever, then let me introduce you to Jeff and Johnny and Kyle and the whole team at Discounted Appliance Warehouse. You can't afford to buy the wrong appliance because they're too expensive, and there's so many different options and brands and features that you really need someone to help you figure it all out. That's what you get at Discounted Appliance Warehouse. They have an A-plus Better Business Bureau rating, nearly perfect reviews on Google, and the team at Discounted Appliance Warehouse, they have the knowledge you need to have confidence in your purchase. They'll show you around the warehouse, over 11,000 square feet, slam-packed with new appliances, and help you find the ideal solution. And with expert installation, 
their award-winning service department, and their extended warranties. They have you covered well beyond the sale. They also are proud to offer Speed Queen, the only washer and dryers with up to seven-year warranty on parts and labor. Discounted Appliance Warehouse, they're located in Pickens and online at dawpickens.com. A group of climate activists are eyeing their next big protest over the summer. In a statement to group members and supporters, Client Defiance is calling for a historic blockade of the congressional baseball game. <laughs> uh, this is an annual competition where Republican and Democrat members of Congress compete in America's favorite pi- pastime. Uh, in, the, in their statement, they say, uh, Client Defiance said, we, society, humanity, are careening into an uh, abyss. The decisions we make now will reverberate not for centuries but for millennia if we don't act now boldly and swiftly millions would die from storms and from starvation michael greenberg the climate defiance founder said so long as congress torches our planet we won't give them a moment of rest it is unconscionable that they play games while destroying our prospect for a decent future he uh delivered this statement to the media he said our entire world faces imminent catastrophe Congress has the power to save millions, even billions of lives. The fact that they haven't already ended fossil fuel subsidies is shameful, he said. We're shutting down the congressional baseball game to send a message. We will do whatever it takes to force those in power to end fossil fuels. In this mass email, Greenberg said he organized a similar protest at the congressional baseball game two years ago, as it is unconscionable that they play games as our prospects for a decent future slips out of our grip. Protest did not materialize, however, after the U.S. Senate reached a deal on climate spending just ahead of the scheduled event meeting the group's interest. So Climate Defiance is organizing another attempt to disrupt the game. This March was the warmest on record, the 10th month in a row that was the hottest ever. Our planet is burning and Congress is playing baseball, they said. The anticipated protest is targeting members of both parties as, like the congressional baseball game, fossil fuel subsidies are a bipartisan affair, Climate Defiance told uh, Fox News. Added, Biden's 2023 budget plan even proposed cutting tens of billions in tax breaks for fossil fuel companies, but House Democrats themselves fought to keep those subsidies in place. We're not asking you to give money right now. We're not asking you to sign a petition or call your legislator or tweet. We're asking you to join us in person in a blockade of the congressional baseball game. Shut it down with us, they say. On the Client Defiance website, the group calls for a consistent mass turnout, nonviolent disruption to stop business as usual and compel politicians to act. They said, when we engage in direct action, whether through a strike, a blockade, or a mass occupation, we break through. Direct action puts the state in a double blind, allow the action and the disruption to continue or crack down, further driving up the public support for our calls, they say. The... Uh, 2024 Congressional Baseball Game is scheduled for 5 p.m. at Nationals Park in Washington, D.C. on Wednesday, June the 12th. The Congressional Baseball Game was founded in first plate in 1909. Republicans won the 2023 contest 16 to 6. You, th- you think shutting down the Congressional Baseball Game is going to change how these men and women in Congress vote on climate change? You, you, you think... <laughs> This is almost laughable, isn't it? Uh, first off, they're, they're giving them a heads up. So so hopefully Congress is going to be smart enough to have extra security out there to not allow this disruption to occur. But again, secondly, sh- surely uh, stopping a baseball game is not going to change the mind of particularly the Republicans, I would think. And maybe even some of the Democrats who see this whole climate change for what it is. Just uh, just recently, I uh, forget which episode it was. You can go back and, and search. Uh, it was one day last week, I'm pretty certain. I talked with you about some of the climate stories that we had heard, some of, some of the sky is falling type stories uh, that never materialized. And it's worth reviewing, so go back and listen to that. Uh, I mean, examples of the 60s where they were saying that the that the uh, Earth was going to be, or, or the United States was going to be underwater, things like that, and it never happened. 
because that's what these these uh, these climate activists do. They have you believe that the world is falling apart or that it's burning from from uh, from the center out. When we all know that, yes, we have cycles of weather, some years are hotter than others. We shall see. <laughs> That's it for today's edition of Just the Truth. Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio. To lose weight for the last time, visit myphdweightloss.com. Hey, if you haven't joined the mailing list, visit my website, joeyhudson.com. Click on the Connect with Joey button so that you can receive our emails. And we don't send them often, just when they're needed with the most up-to-date news. Also, find me on YouTube. Just search for Joey Hudson. Thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with me. And as a reminder, like Ray was saying in his comment on the Furman Ford text line earlier, share this edition of Just the Truth with your contact list. Send it to your family. Send it to friends. Send it to people you know in church or your coworkers. Let them know that they need to be part of our Just the Truth family as we continue to grow. Keep those emails coming too, joey at joeyhudson.com. We're back again tomorrow. Hope you will be too. Until then, remember, God's got this. He's still in control.